everybody might seem sad right now. Everybody mm-hmm. might be a little upset. Definitely. Might be a, a very melancholy mood going on. But I tell you what, man, Disney, say what you will about them. <laughs> be mad at them. Yeah. But they, they're the only company that I know can make a crowd of nerds go crazy with just letters. <laughs> that's true. Just the logo. alphabet. That's, yeah, that's, a, just, that's what we did. Yeah. <laughs> Look, letters. <laughs> people, oh, shit, it spells something. I want to see. Yes. show you shit they nope. just put logos up and people lose it like for example the mandalorian logo but disney said you know something i know i was just gonna show you the logo but i know y'all pissed off about the spider-man thing so i'm gonna go ahead and give you a little bit more yeah give you some maybe not stuff. maybe not for everything else but for you, i'm gonna give you that mandalorian right mm-hmm. now and they are giving you a little bit more they say look what i'm gonna throw in right now for you since uh, you, you you're feeling yourself i'm gonna throw in this cool looking poster wow, that like you got right there of the Mandalorian going across the dusty wasteland. Tatooine. Tatooine. Got those twin sons, baby. And announcing that it will be streaming November 12th. Going to be an eight-episode series. Good. Good amount. At least for the first season, season mm-hmm. whatever. And they say, you, okay, you, you ain't going to let this Spider-Man shit go. Away. <laughs> All right, tell you what. How about throwing the trailer? Oh, I my. like that. Maybe a little happy. <laughs> It, okay. Okay. It's, it, it still hurts. It still stings, but it's, it's a little better. Mm-hmm. A little bit better. <laughs> better be good. Yeah. Well, some people saw the leaked footage and they said it was good, but they only saw about this small and it looked very crappy. <laughs> I remember that. Very yeah. shitty. Yeah. It, I, I remember showing them the show. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Look at what it hurts. Oh, God. <laughs> it was close to the screen, the screen watching that little Mandalorian poster stand. And the guy in the background going, woo! Yeah, that's right. <laughs> You always got that dude at, at every convention. Every, yeah, Whoa! Every convention. Wait for everybody to get quiet. Woo! Mm-hmm. Was that worth a woo? Let's go ahead and take a look at the trailer for The Mandalorian, which is the Star Wars property that everybody has really been looking forward to. Mm-hmm, me too. Damn, did they freeze Freddy Krueger right there? <laughs> oh, no. Robert England, yeah, no. right. He made a appearance, Freddy Krueger. <laughs> Bitch! Ah! <laughs> Carbonite! <laughs> Let me t- let me tell you something, man. Mm-hmm. This might be this is gonna be this is gonna be a little premature, right here. <laughs> now y'all waiting for that shit right now. I already did that when I saw it when it was this small and I couldn't even see it. I'm buckled up for it. That's what I was preparing myself for. I'm not gonna even give you a shit, but oh. if it goes through like it goes through, I'm gonna give you. <laughs> <laughs> it's building up. <laughs> oh God. Oh, who am I kidding? Shit! <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I might be saying this too early, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Was it that fucking hard after 40 years? And it may and it might be. Preach. It might be, but for after 40 years, I'm finally getting something that feels like a galaxy. Right. And not a bunch of people. Not, not it doesn't feel like a high school reunion anymore. <laughs> it's like all these people are just in one place all always. These, it's a galaxy and all these people are always stay in the same place. Now this feels like I'm getting somewhere where I don't have to deal with these people. Mm-hmm. I don't want to see Chewbacca. Nope. I'm he's tired. I'm, he's cool, but I don't, I've don't. i seen you in every goddamn thing they do in Star Wars. I don't need you around anymore. Yep. This is a galaxy. It is. A lot, a lot of things going on in that galaxy. A lot of different people. I, I don't want to see no Skywalking, no, get your hands off me! I will not. I will not say thank you. Let's see what he has to say, people. Let him talk. No, I, no. Listen, I don't want to see nobody skywalking. Mm-mm. I don't. You know, I, I, Darth Vader's cool with me, but he's dude, dead. But he's dead. <laughs> he's gone. And if he is, I, I don't know what's going on. If I know his ghost is walking around. Take, do your shit over there. Mm-hmm. Don't bring it over here, man. I've seen Star Wars. Over and over and over again, it's the same stories, the same characters, the same cameos. Of course. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, and that's why I'm so excited for this, because it's exploring something we haven't seen in Star Wars, the underworld. Only hints of, and now we're going to explore it with different characters for the first time. Yes, ever. I don't want to see y'all. I love y'all. Y'all have given me some great times. You're part of my childhood, but I don't want to see you anymore. Tell some new stories. Mm-hmm. 
That's what I want to see. Yep. Some new stories in this in this world. I don't look. I'm not the most hardcore Star Wars fan, I ain't. so I don't get. I, and you are. I am. I know my stuff. You know. I no. You know. If there's ever Star Wars trivia going on, I will be there with you, and I'll just sit in the corner and shut up and let you just talk. <laughs> what I'm saying with that though is that I, I don't have the opportunity to read sure. all the novels. Mm-hmm. And all the you know all the comics, comics, games and things, and games and things. I just don't have the time to do it, mm-hmm. and so I don't get maybe maybe in those areas, you know, you get into a lot of things that uh you know that are outside of what the regular fans they, they expand upon definitely. Yeah, but I don't get a chance to see that. Mm-hmm. I would so that being the case, maybe it's a little selfish. I would love to see it in my on my shows or in my movies. Sure, an easier way for you to consume. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And not only does it look like they're starting to expand with yep. this man, yep. but I know. Listen, I know throwing that term "dark" around. I know that today that means nothing. It's a popular thing to say. It's a popular thing. Doesn't to mean say. anything. Be yeah. dark. Mm-hmm. Ooh, you're so dark. Gritty. Oh my god, you're so gritty. Yeah, you're so dark. Let me t- let me tell you something, man. Yeah. Uh, Star Wars needs to be dark. Of course, it does. It could be I, a lot of different things. Dark it, is one of those things. It needs to be too. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, uh, and, and I get it, man. You know, dark is not always a great thing. You know, yeah. uh, trying to be dark is what got us, you know, in trouble with with DC. You know, that's when we got two dudes fighting over their mother's name. <laughs> you know? A psychopathic uh, Superman yeah. and Batman. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You know, it. I get it. I get it. You know, dark is not always something that is good. Mm-hmm. But for Star Wars... You need you need you need some darkness, especially for a bounty hunt uh, bounty hunting show where the, the the whole premise is you were going around the galaxy hunting people, either killing them or bringing them in to be killed or imprisoned. It needs to be dark. <laughs> yeah, not not only not only uh uh you know something where you're a bounty hunter. Mm-hmm. We're talking about a lone gunslinger right here. Sure, yeah, spaghetti western. Yeah, it has that feel of it. It, it really mm-hmm. does. You know, you need that, man. This is what we've been needing for a long time. I'm gonna tell you something. If you, if if you don't it, it try to uh, it put put at least let's not even say dark, some edge yeah. into Star Wars. Star Wars would dip into some areas and tip over to places you don't want it to. That's how we got Ewoks, man. <laughs> you know, I, I, little monkey I'm people. cool. Yeah, they 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 look at them. Done. <laughs> The costumes are so cheap too. You never know; they never blink. <laughs> they don't. Oh, they did in the special edition. Did, did, oh, no. did, did they add eyelids? CG eyelids? CG eyelids? Because I remember mean, I went to the movies. Like, man, it, you know, even I don't hate the Ewoks, but goddamn, these those are some. It's like they almost just tore off teddy bear heads and put them on costume it, yeah, bodies. Yeah, it takes away the threat of the movie. You're absolutely it does. Right. Yeah. It's like all right, they just so strung out; they can't even <laughs> blink. That's when you dip over into areas like the notorious uh, special know. man. You know what? I used to like this song. I'm not going to lie. No, that's that's Jefferson Airplane. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's groovy, dude. But you know, that's oh, not wow. Star Wars, man. Wow. You know, it's, it, you get things like that when you don't go dark. And we've gotten other things like, you know, Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've. Uh, I, I even think with the... A lot of the prequel comedy. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you, even with the even with the prequels, we don't see it, but that I'm, I'm not... I'm just not a big fan of the Star Wars movies anymore. Sure. That last Star Wars movie, for all the for all the edge and darkness that they showed in this trailer, it was the prequels, man. A lot of that yep. was just there for comedy, introducing characters yep. just for comedy. It fell flat on its face in the in the worst way possible. No, it did. It did. Even uh, you know, I'll even give Star Wars I don't hate I hate the prequels, but I'll even give episode three for trying to push it a little bit. You know? Tried. Tried. I mean, sure <laughs> didn't, didn't really do, didn't go do a good job at it. No, not at all. <laughs> no. But you know, uh, I think this is actually, for certain fans, this is giving them what people have been asking for for a long time. Man. It's exploring a lot of the Legends material. Ge- delving into those short stories were always about the, the, bounty, hu- the bounty hunting community. You know, the, the cantinas, you know, the smugglers and criminals and mercenaries. That was always a part of those books and comics, but was never showed on the screen before. And when they're not trying to, like, you know, push the marketing so much for the toys and all sure. that kind of stuff. You do get the best of a bunch of genres. Mm-hmm. You do get... The best of adventure. Yep. You do get the best of a western. Yep. You do get the best of uh, even a war story. You know, like mm. like what they. That's why that's why Rogue One is one of my favorite uh, 
It's one of my favorite uh, uh, Star Wars movies as of late. Certainly one of my favorite of the new ones, yeah. Because yeah. it, it dealt with the soldiers. Like, what? Yeah you, get, yeah, you have the leaders. You have these Jedi who run around, get the best missions. What about the grunt soldiers who have to go, d- go there and die in the muck while these yeah. heroes get the parade? Yeah. Get goddamn medals the whole time. That schmuck didn't get a medal. Got no. blasted by the Death Star. Oh, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, man. I like yeah. that, man, when it's kind of grim sometimes. Yes. If you really think about it, and we're going to go into the trailer right here. We're talking about why this is why, why this potentially is so important. Yeah. Um, them, it, I, I truly believe it was those grittier, darker moments that really made Star Wars, the original Star Wars, what it is today. It stood and, out. Or, or the, the legend that what it is today. Or... That's what made it such a huge phenomenon back then. It was a lived-in sci-fi world. Everything looked you, especially in the, 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 the original trilogy, especially. But that first movie, when you're on that desert planet, and yeah, you see these droids walking off, but they don't look like shit. Yeah, every, <laughs> Have them are yeah. breaking down. You have this bulky technology, and these starships that were just like even, like a hunk of junk. like Stuff like that always still is like, I could see this happening. Yeah. It was really cool. It was, it was a world that was appealing, not because mm-hmm. of just, you know, this... Uh, you know this this Zen training that people took, yeah, or, with, or because things. of robots, or because yeah. of sci-fi. It felt real because it was always, uh, you know, they were they weren't afraid to deal with uh, seedy, shady characters. Wanted men. I have the death sentence on twelve systems. I'll be careful. <laughs> Damn, he wasn't even doing shit. <laughs> he was just standing there. <laughs> it, was, it was the, the, the guy with the messed up face yeah. who was talking shit. Dr. Cornelius is what Dr. his name. Cornelius, Dr. Yeah. Cornelius is on that shit. <laughs> <laughs> at the yeah. bar high as fuck and got his yeah. friend's arm cut off. Yeah. You know, when I saw that as a kid, look at that. They weren't afraid. To, that was a PG movie, blood, man. Blood. It's blood splattered over the floor. A severed limb. <laughs> a severed monkey limbs on the floor. You know, they were never afraid to get dirty and yeah. gritty with it, man. He was like, damn, I'm a jack off hand too. <laughs> it's got a nub now. Uh, you know, and, and that's what I see here, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, you know, like you said, we're dealing in a world of, uh, of bounty hunters, man. Mm-hmm. Criminals. Criminals. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, hopefully we have a character that is uh, going to be also kind of, you know, anti hero, amoral, amoral. Or, um, or at least, you know, uh, morally, con- you know, confused or challenging to the audience yep. out there. Uh, but. I love that this is taking on the feel of a Western, man. The timeline that they've established is, is that this takes place five years after Return of the Jedi. The Empire has fallen, but there is still contingents of Imperial uh, you know, holdouts around the galaxy. And um, right now you see this bounty hunter working for trying to help one of those Imperial contingents escape. I love it because they've established that th- th- these are the Imperials, much like the Nazis in, in Nazi Germany during the 40s, escaping yeah. to Argentina. They're trying to get away to establish the first yeah. order. And I see how, you yeah. know, that they, <laughs> there's all kind of symbols that everything is kind of lawless now. Yep, yep. I, you know, I would even like to, for it to be explored like, you know... Maybe the Empire had a, you know, Listen, maybe, maybe they, they had a reason, you know. They blew up plants and all, but they kept the, things the intact. The trains ran on time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when they take taking this feel of Western, it's, I mean, they they kind of just really ran with that. Oh yeah. I'm looking at you know some of the the like the beautiful vistas that they have here, mm-hmm. the canyons, yeah, the, the, the yeah. plateaus, yeah, desert environments. Yeah. Uh, also, as we were saying, it's it's going back to. Uh, uh, Kind of the, the cool violence that they did in the uh, in the original Star Wars, like this dude. This I love this. <laughs> that dude is. F- oh yeah, he's getting sawed in half. He was trying to get away. Yeah. He's like, I don't want any part of this. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would you? Why would you even have a door like that? Yeah. Why would you have a door that looks like an asshole with razors? <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> just, don't clench, don't clench. Yeah, so, yeah. Look, okay, so I said I don't there are certain uh characters that I that I don't want to see back again. I'm done with all these movies. But some people like, come on man, you know, I they didn't give me shit to do. And I was and I was I was presented as a badass. Yeah. You know, and I didn't get to show off I anything. Know. Uh, you know, at least we get to see Probably some of these bounty hunters maybe show up, which is such a cool moment from that, like the Empire Strikes Back. But they, yeah, they don't do anything; they just stand there. But they look cool. That's all they're there for, just to look cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's sad because in the Legends material, like those stories of them are awesome. Like they really get into who they are and their personalities, how they compete against one another, how Boba Fett. He's clearly the best of them, and he's always tricking them all the time. Like really fun stuff. But again, not shown on screen. 
No, Boba Fett got cheated, but at he least didn't. you got to see him do something. I mean, he died he, he a wacky didn't. ass death. Oh, God. But all these other dudes, they you never see him again. You never see them again, and they say, you know, because they because you know the audience is like, damn, y'all look cool. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to see y'all in action. They're just like, well, you just have to take our word for it because Uncle George didn't give us shit yeah, to do. No, nope, except now. I mean, you know, I'm looking at uh, one of the, uh, you know, one of the uh, more robotic IG88 man. You know, you might actually get. I, I don't know if that's him. It's not. It's, it's that, one of his line. They call him IG11 because that's badass. Man, look at that. He's gonna shoot behind his back. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like it's old, you know what? It's like old Western tricks when you shoot behind your back and stuff. Yeah, know, like shooting it, tricks. And that's what they describe for IG Eleven, and they say he's going to have like a really, you know, IG out there or IG, yeah. Or, oh, no, this, this is, is a IG Eleven. I, IG Eleven. Okay. And they're saying that he's going to have a very, you know, weird personality. He's voiced by Taika Waititi. Oh, is he? Yeah. I like that they're, actually, you know, coming in and showing uh, uh other characters too. Mm. Uh, that. You know, I've always felt like, uh, you know, again, if you read the lore yeah. or if you read some of the books or comics or anything like that or played the games, you might have seen some of these characters do more than probably the average fan like myself. Mm-hmm. But uh, Twi'leks, man, you know, got one of those Twi'leks girls I in there. Know. Know, hey, you like what you yeah, see? Yeah, I should right. do it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I love them tubes coming out your head right there. <laughs> yeah, because the only uh, Twi'lek that we see in the series, like, who gets dialogue is yeah. Bib Fortuna. Uh, Jabba the Hutt's Major Domo. See, I, I've all, man, I always hated the way they did that girl, man. <laughs> Turned on yeah. by this. He too, likes man. it, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, they go into that in the in the in the movies. How he has a fetish. He has a human and like uh, a Twi'lek fetish. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah he's yeah. like he's in like books. He's like the. Ah, I know. He, I he's like, like the, the, the Harvey Weinstein of the Star Wars universe, <laughs> man. <laughs> It's entertainment. Got him right. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody just asshole. Oh, man. yeah, they're all about yeah. it. Get hey, that bitch. Yeah. As long as it's not me. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I think that this is probably the most important thing that they've done because really, when you get right down to it, man, it feels like, if nothing else, this is uh, something that's not trying too hard. It feels like with them being on, on, the, on Disney Plus, mm-hmm. you know, all places, it feels like they, you know, John Favreau is the showrunner here. He is. And it feels like, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be held down by, you know, your 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 marketing and you're you know, obligated yeah, to do this. Yeah, your corporate, you know, your this this corporate obligation to to make toys and whatnot. I'm yeah. here to tell a story. Mm-hmm. And and like I said, when I watch this, or when you watch this, and when we watch this, it might not be what. What you know, the vibes that we're getting right here. This could be something completely different, and it could yeah. be terrible. Who knows? Yeah. But it really does come across like you guys are trying to just tell a badass story right here. Mm-hmm. No frills of anything else involved. When I say no frills, you're not, you're not trying. You know, you're also not beholden to the Skywalker story, original you're, characters. Yeah, you know, yeah. we're not trying to deal with the Force. The, you know, the the Empire's not even here. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> that's true. So yeah, I. I don't know, man. I'm thinking that... Uh, you mean it's doing something new in Star Wars? Whoa! Whoa! I think they do have a game plan. I think they do have um, um, a, a long arc for a lot of these new characters and also some returning ones. And that's why I'm excited for it. And it's also looking like they got a great, mature cast here. Yeah, they do. You know, I'm looking Not at all some- young kids. They got some old people in here. That's no, that's true. We're not dealing with you know. We're not trying to bring teenagers. in uh, teenagers to like uh, <laughs> appeal to the the younger fans out there. Mm-hmm. You know they they got uh, Gus Fring up in here selling space meth. <laughs> you know uh, what's his name? Jean Carlo Esposito. Jean Carlo Esposito apparently playing Jean Carlo Commando and like uh, a Tie Fighter pilot. Uh, only thing I know this girl is that uh, what Deadpool called her, less uh, angry Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> what's she, her Gina name? Carano. Yeah. Which, uh, that's of all the casting, this is the one I'm not excited for. Look, she's a great athlete. She knows how to do stunts, and she's good in action scenes. But man, she struggles when it comes to dialogue and delivering dialogue. I'm kind of the same way with her. I'm yeah. like, yeah. Her, her character, she's an ex-rebel, and she's become disenfranchised with the New Republic, and that's why she's become a bounty hunter. I'm looking at a... I'm look, and, when I, and when I'm looking at the, uh, the rest of the casting here, uh, you, uh, people you don't see, um, who's playing the actual Mandalorian? Oh, uh, uh, Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I hope that with somebody that we never see... 
Mm-hmm. I hope that I hope it's just never revealed. I hope he never shows his face. I bet they're gonna do the thing what they always want to do with Boba Fett, where it's like that is his face. One of uh, Boba Fett's iconic lines in the Legends material is that like because people are like, why don't you ever take your helmet off? Because this is this is it, this is my face. This is who I am. This is what people respect and fear. And I think what they're doing with Pedro Pascal's Mandalorian, maybe he'll get a name, we don't know, but they're gonna have him be the man with no name. He's gonna be Clint, Clint Eastwood. Eastwood's character yeah. from the the Dollars trilogy. We're talking about. Some of the actors that they have here and actresses, and they have skewed older right down to just old. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, what's his name here? Werner uh, Herzog. Yeah. Who's going to be, uh, like, again, he's, he's the escaped Nazi, the escaped Imperial trying to get off this planet because people are trying to kill him. They want to because they hate the Empire. And so he's yep. hiring the Mandalorian to get him and his people off. And that's what's really cool. I bet. They described him as being the villain. I bet he's done some horrible things about He's done some horrible him. things. He'll double cross. Yeah. You know, like, like, like you're saying, he's, yeah. a, he's, a, he's an escaped Nazi. He's, to the, he's, point. He's the Joseph Mengele, Mengele of, the, of the Imperial. I mean, they're not even trying to be <laughs> subtle with it. Yeah. Don't you agree? <laughs> I, I guess. <laughs> I guess I have to. <laughs> Plural, who are you again? <laughs> he that way. Have you been back there the whole time? They're only going to go so far. Okay, it's course. not going to be rated R or anything yeah. like that. I don't expect it to be. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I don't, and honestly, like I said, man, usually when people want rated R stuff, it's just. You know, it's usually just more blood and cursing. I yeah, don't and, and all that's that. not always great. We saw that with shows like The Punisher. That didn't make it better. It no, still sucked because actually, of the dialogue and story. That's why I always say, man, they pull this off. They can always do a Punisher on Disney+. Plus. But, you know, mm-hmm. Disney+, Plus, you know, they, they, they let you know, hey, Disney, Pixar, all these friendly logos right here, National Geographic, you know. I, I, that, <laughs> You're going to see some animals mess up some people <laughs> and other animals. You're going to eat something. <laughs> I'm not expecting this to go, you know, I mean, we, PG-13. we're talking dark and everything, but it's not going to go uh, extremely dark. Uh but the, again, it it shows that they're not trying to just uh, uh, skew this and force it to be kids' entertainment. Mm-mm. No, I think it's going to be a PG thirteen show. You're going to see some violence. You're going to see some stuff like, "Oh, that guy got really messed up." See some people blast out of the way, explode. But you're not going to see someone like you know turn into like a cloud of blood mist or something, or someone's guts falling out as they're walking forward or something like that. I, I'm silly. For this show, mm-hmm. for when it comes out, now I don't want to build myself up too much because I, I was kind of crazy when the, the the, the first uh, Force Awakens the, the, came Force out. Awakens came out, which I'm still I'm taking on. Get your hands off my Force Awakens! <laughs> I like that movie. It was too familiar, but I thought it it at the time it reestablished Thank you, what Cloud, people by the way. like about Star Wars. We're yeah. gonna go back to basics, and that's why I have appreciation for that film. As far as Force Awakens and Last Jedi, I'm just I'm just done, man. I'm not into it. I'm not, you know, I'm not. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm done with the Skywalker story. Mm-hmm. I'm done them. I'm done with them trying to cram these characters in there because, like you said, they you know they they uh they read a plan. They never had a plan for this this new trilogy. They never had this as organized as they tried to come across. Yeah. and they and they you know what and it, it was uh it just it, it, say what you will about George Lucas. This just does not feel genuine. No, it doesn't. It like as much as I. As we dislike the prequels, he had that story planned out for that initial that that trilogy that he had back then. And I'm gonna tell you something else. They pulled a DC with this, with them trying to make all these side movies and uh, you know spinoffs and everything from this. uh, You know, uh, uh, Solo and Boba Fett and all that. You know, they they were they were kind of you know they they were they they had they were trying to force it to be Marvel. Mm -hmm. And if you ask me, that's what they're doing with this series right here. They're really trying to force the you know uh, uh, this. Uh, 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 I guess it's long form storytelling that's sure. really not there and not really well thought out if you no, ask me. No, I, I totally agree. And I'm going to continue to say it right now. I, if I wasn't doing movie reviews as a job mm-hmm. and I still love movies don't get me wrong I'm not jaded or cynical or anything like They're that. They're great. But you know, I, no, I love movies man but I, I got to be honest with you if I was not doing that and I didn't have to go to movies my ass would be at home. Mm-hmm. It's too much that not only streaming, there's too much good streaming. Yeah. A lot of great content out yeah. right now. Shit, I might quit everything when Disney Plus comes out. All this stuff <laughs> that they got going on. It's too much, man. Keep you at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm I'm this is uh I'm excited for this. Me this too. is this is amazing mm-hmm. what I've seen right here. This is the, this is Star Wars. This is the Star Wars I've been asking for for the goddamn last 20 years. 25, 30 maybe even. Yeah, and showing another side of the franchise that we always wanted to explore. That was always there, but they never capitalized on. No. Oh, Jesus, people. Was it that hard? Guess so. No. Oh, yeah. 40 years it took to them a while, but yeah. We'll have to wait until November 12th. Soon. Launching. Soon. Uh, d- that's also when Disney Plus is launching. And it's launching. This is one of the launch series, so it, it makes me feel like they have a lot of confidence in this. Um, Got some news that just dropped right here. Yeah. They say that they are going to be uh, 
for the Mandal- Mandalorian to get in the Jeff's and Star shit. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> Never mind. No. no. Maybe they'll Hell get the no. cantina van. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a little while ago, speaking of the edginess of the uh, of the Star Wars universe, mm-hmm. and we're talking about how now now this is more like it. Now we're getting back into that OG shit. You know, the original was was dirty, grimy, edgy, grounded, grounded. Mm-hmm. One of the and one of the the most bad. Everybody talks about Han Solo, man. But one of the most badass people in there. People, people forgot Han Solo. Yeah, sure, he shot a dude in cold blood. <laughs> but, but, shot, shot a fish man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, shot a fish. Yeah, shot, shot a fish dude. <laughs> you know, he had it coming anyway. Yeah, he, did, he did. Yeah, he talking he was, shit. Yeah, he's talking <laughs> shit. But everybody forgets that, that. Hey, everybody forgets about that old man that was in there chopping up limbs, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Doesn't like you. I'm sorry. I don't like you either. Yeah, you were close talking. <laughs> yeah, this is, I really don't want to look at you right now. Damn, your breath smells like your face right now. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way they showed you, too. Oh, yeah. He messed him up. <laughs> yeah, he messed him up. I want, to see, I want you to see how it started. I'm like, because what they did was they started you here, like, oh, do you think he's knocked down on the ground? No, oh, that's his arm. <laughs> You looking at this shit? Well, I even love it. Like yeah. the, the weird guy, the the, the the weird face man. He's like, I don't remember talking to you, old man. I was talking to this kid. Yeah, yeah. And what happened? <laughs> Walrus dude had to. I like the way yeah. I like the way Obi Wan Kenobi. Like, you know what? I'll just show you how badass I'm. I'm not even gonna f- you up. I'm gonna f- the guy who even say shit. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, can, what can you think's gonna happen yeah, to you? Yeah. <laughs> now, who next? Shut the f- up. <laughs> You see that? He like, yeah. All right, y'all want to play? Look at that. that little small thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he like, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been waiting for somebody to start some shit. When we talk about the the prequels, man, as mm-hmm. I said, it's it is no secret that uh, I am not a fan. We, uh, oh, we. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, everybody talks about Revenge of the Sith, man. Sure. And everybody talks about how dark that was. I'm not a big fan of this series, man, at all. I, and I appreciate that they tried to go real dark with it. One of the people in the movie that really did a great job. Tried to, at least. I tried, you know, worked with what he had, man. And it was a great casting decision, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Owen McGregor right. as Obi-Wan Kenobi. And as we saw, Obi-Wan Kenobi is truly a badass. I said, as much as I hate these prequels, I don't want to see anybody, because I don't even want there to be any connection no, to No, I get you. I, I am, I'm the same way to a certain extent. But you know what? If you got to bring somebody back, you know, he was there before mm-hmm. these prequels even came about. Uh... Obi-Wan Kenobi's character that we know from the original Star Wars. Mm-hmm. If you're bringing his stories back and we have some of the same tone that we have with uh, that, like what is what, what seems promised with the Mandalorian, right. I would love to see the further adventures of, or, or not the further adventures, but like his uh, some of the adventures that he had when we when he was on Tatooine sure. and we weren't able to see those. When we're exploring an era that we've only heard about or have like Slightly has been touched in expanded materials. The stuff when he's been doing, you know, on Tatooine for twenty years. Which they show in comics and novels. In comics, and yeah. I mean, really how he's he, originally he was just so disenfranchised, not knowing to do with himself. Like he, you know, despite not being fans of the prequels, his character was interesting. That he was a general in this grand army. He was well respected, and now he's nothing. Now he's just watching this kid, yeah. not knowing what the hell he's going to do, what really his purpose is. But he then he finds purpose, realizing like I can help the people of these communities. I can defend them from Tuscan raiders, from gangsters, from job of the hut and I can have that sense of fulfillment and realize like I'm here for a reason and maybe I don't understand what that is right now but I'm still going to be doing what I'm going to be doing because I want to help people and that's what makes him such a compelling character. I think we'll start getting some really compelling stories in the Star Wars universe and even going in and retroactively re- retroactively uh, telling stories Fixing of characters that, that that weren't the, that that we did not get a chance to really get to know, see that side of, or get to know, or when we did see them, they weren't really told, and and they, they, I don't think they were done justice. No, not at all. You know, especially so him. Uh, and we and listen, we've already seen some uh, some other characters come back. You know, in uh, in Rogue One, um, what was his name? Uh, um, 
Oh, um, Jimmy Smits. Uh, oh, uh, as uh, Bail Organa. And it was somewhere I was like, hey, man, you know, that's my that's my title man in speak, uh, uh, speaking up here. I would love to see these movies just ignored. But he's here now. We're acknowledging them. But they're doing better things with they, him. They did better things with him, and it makes sense because he was one of the founders of the Rebellion. Well, it seems like they're doing a lot of promising stuff with Star Wars, man. Yeah, especially in the television department. The television department. Uh, Small Time says, meh, an Obi-Wan prequel makes no sense. He's supposed to be a hermit who never fought again to All New Hope. But we don't really know that. Clearly, he's out there protecting Luke, so it's not, that's not to say that he didn't uh, fight again. You know, And I think that he would protect the community on Tatooine to protect yeah. Luke. Yeah. I think that would make sense. And what if, we, like I said, what if we get that... that that story of him or his, a part of his history where it's like, man, this guy was kind of crazy at one time. Sure. No, I, I think that they should delve into that. Yeah. We like, should have a character who questions himself. I mean, we see him. He's a sweet old man, but you know, we never saw, you know, it's like that dude that everybody says, yeah, man, that sweet old guy, man, he was talking shit back in the day and starting fights every night. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that sweet old guy that, you know, like a, you know, a few decades ago killed Nazis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's what they could do with him. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Boykins. I'm new to this whole Star Wars stuff, so, so far the new shows look cool. And that, that, that's interesting, because maybe, for a lot of people, this will be their first entry into Star Wars. Like, they weren't a fan of the movies, mm-hmm. but with these new characters that who have no connections to those films, uh, that's a good entry point, I think. It'll be a good gateway for a lot of people, particularly with The Mandalorian, uh, you know, uh, I would say. Well, the cool thing about The Mandalorian is that it's smart. Mm-hmm. Star Wars was very accessible to a lot of people because they chose, uh, again, a genre that is universal, man, yeah. uh, a Western. Yeah. You know, even people, it's funny because people today, they'll tell you, I hate Westerns, but people <laughs> love the elements of a Western. Of people love the gunslinger, the outlaw, mm-hmm. the renegade, uh, 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 the you rogue, know, a, a rebel, you know, all, you know, they, they love characters like that. The Mandalorian it's going to be very accessible for people, man, yep. I think. Oh, yeah. Now, the wrong of simplifying thing. And Nick Nolte, people are saying, Realist Venture, Nick Nolte for the old Obi-Wan reboot. <laughs> maybe, that, maybe that'll be the transition. He's oh. like Nick Nolte, because he's in The Mandalorian. They didn't describe what his character is, but I would love it if he was like an old bounty hunter, smuggler. Because Nick going, Nolte's ah. crazy anyway. Nick Nolte is, oh, yeah, is Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just losing his mind, yeah. eating lizards and shit. Yeah, outside. somebody knocks his lightsaber out, like, I don't need a lightsaber, just bites people. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sticking around, everybody. You know you love us. You want to be around us. So please hit that subscribe button, hit notifications, and since you love us so much, check out our main site, doubletoasted.com. Over there, you'll find the long version of this video and many others, uncensored, unedited, along with the live streams that we do almost every night of the week. Support us at our store, dtmerch.com, and remember to always stay posted.